one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to our very first uh, work from home tech support stream. Um, I'm joined here with three experts. Um, I'm going to let you guys each introduce yourselves, uh, tell us what you do, so on and so forth. Uh, Darren. Oh, hello, I'm uh, Darren. I am a community moderator and tech specialist uh, for Netgear for the past five years. Cool, and uh, I am Alec. Uh, I am just recently uh, celebrating my one year at Netgear. I've been here for uh, a year. And uh, I'm an interactive media specialist, which means I do a lot of graphic design, photography, videography. Um, but I get to work with a lot of people here at Netgear, so I've built a little bit of knowledge about the uh, products themselves from a technical point, um, but uh, not not quite as much as uh, Michael Ellis here, the uh, resident expert. Michael? Okay, yep, my name is Michael Ellis, and I'm the technical marketing manager at um, Netgear. I've been at Netgear for a little over um, 10 years, and a lot of my job is hands-on on the various pieces of hardware, creating demos and um, beta testing products. So hopefully I can help answer some questions. Hi, I'm uh, Ben Acevedo. Uh, I am the uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming ex uh, Brand Experience Manager. You might know me from streams as already Ben, but uh, I have been with Nighthawk Pro Gaming for the last two years and will uh, uh, we're here to answer any questions that you have uh, from networking, gaming, uh, you know, recommendations. And uh, so we're here to help. So let them fly. Yeah, yeah. No. So to, to build off of what Ben said, um, we know that there is a lot of uh, tech support needed currently, um, given that so many people are working from home. Um, home networking is becoming even more important than it typically would be, as, you know, a lot of us are making our livelihood from home now, um, given the current situation in the world. Um, and no company um, in the world is going unaffected right now. Um, and that includes us. So we are definitely feeling that stress of having so much, um, so many questions coming in, um, compounded with the fact that we are down on staff currently. Um, so we do hear you guys in the community um, saying that you are having a problem reaching us, you need tech support, um, and this is kind of one way for us to try to help out. Um, so we brought on, um, you know, three experts and me <laughs> in hopes to help you guys. Um, we want to answer as many questions. So please um, file in, ask your questions in the chat. Um, and we're, we're here to help. But, um, you know, in the case uh, that we do need to be prepared to, if we're taking in too many questions here, um, Michael Ellis, uh, here is the expert of um, submitting support tickets. So, Michael, can you share with everybody um, here viewing the stream, um, if we do miss a question, how can they get help um, aside from joining in on our next stream? Yeah, what um, you need to do is you actually need to go to mynetgear.com. And once you've gone to that um, website, you'll um, be required to create an account on Netgear if you don't already have one. Once you've created that account, then you'll log into your own account and you can add whatever products you have with their serial number. And once the serial number is in there, you can create a support ticket and contact Netgear through phone, chat, or email, depending on what works best for you. Totally. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and actually demo this for you guys right now. Um, we do have a question from uh, Joseph. So after the demo, we're going to answer Joseph's question. But uh, I'm just going to go ahead and demo this for you guys now so you can see um, how to do this uh, in case we're unable to get your question, but it looks like we're going to be able to reach everybody. The chat is not going too fast currently, which is great. So we'll be able to answer all the questions that are coming in currently. Um, so first you're going to go to yeah, and, uh, mynetgear.com. And, and later in the stream, we'll also go over this process before we uh, end the stream. So that way, if you're joining late, uh, you'll be able to um, just run through the entire process again. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be here for two hours um so on and so forth so here's a list of all my products here um i have hardware support for all of these products um so if i go over to my support once you've logged onto the my netgear portal um you're able to get help on um a netgear product by contacting support or creating a support ticket here um so that's the portal for you guys to use 
Um, it should be uh, pretty simple, but yeah, as I said earlier, we are really feeling a lot of stress um, from all the incoming questions and our, our lack of staff currently. So that's why we've come here to answer your questions. Um, so let's just jump in and start answering some of the questions. Um, we already have one from uh, Joseph Allen. I'm not sure if you guys can see his question currently, but it says, I have an RAX 120 with the new software. It keeps factory resetting itself under load slash traffic. Um, slash the traffic meter is no longer working. So um, do we have anybody who wants to try to help uh, Joseph out here on this one? Uh, Darren? Um, yeah. Uh, so when he says factor resetting, does he just mean I, I need him to clarify if it's just powering off and resetting or if he's losing all of his settings and has to reset up the router again uh, when it's under load or traffic? Uh, a basic thing maybe that could be happening is it could be getting really hot. So maybe if he has it stashed away in a cabinet or something, it needs better airflow, put it more out in the open so it can cool itself better. But uh, I, maybe a little bit more detail if it's just uh, resetting or if it's actually losing all the settings. Yeah, any, um, do you have any other ideas uh, for that one, Michael? Aside from over No, that pretty, much, that pretty much takes care of it um, without actually getting more specific information. Um, re obviously, oh, the reflashing the firmware is one thing you can try. But if it's randomly doing this, that probably is not going to directly affect it. Yeah, it looks like he's losing all of his settings, um, according to the chat. Yeah, he yeah, should like, definitely not be losing all of his settings. Not, yeah. not if it's rebooting. Like Michael said, reflashing the firmware might be a good first step. Maybe there's something corrupted when it updated the firmware. Uh, but if it's constantly losing its settings on restart, he, he may need to contact support about that one. Yeah, there may be a, a deeper issue. Um, are, are, are we taking uh, people's um, uh, direct information uh, on that, or how are we how are we clearing those those deeper issues? Um. If he has submitted a support ticket, he can let us know in the chat uh, so we could take a look at that one in particular. Um, yeah, but Joseph, those are our suggestions. Um, if you do, if you haven't already opened a ticket, um, try our suggestions first, and then if they don't work, um, go ahead and open a ticket, and then uh, you could forward that to us here, and we'll we'll, uh, we'll have it on hand. Um, we did get another question from Richard Rodriguez. Um, he said the RX 200 static IP is not working. I have them all set static and random IPS are, um, are set. Um, anybody want to take that one? I'm not too familiar uh, with uh, static uh, IPs. Yeah, normally when you set a static IP, um, the router knows that the MAC address for that particular device is attached to that IP. So there shouldn't be any reason why it's been assigning a random IP address to a device if you've already set it. Darren, do you have any ideas on what he could try? Uh, I'm, I take it he's using the address reservation and it's not working properly. Is that, is that a, how you're interpreting that? That's how I'm interpreting it. Okay, yeah, I, I don't know why it should save it, I mean, every device that you save for the MAC address should come up using the same IP if it's in the address reservation. But yeah, that's kind of odd. Might be something we need to report if, if that is an issue in the firmware. Uh, might have to do some testing on that one. Um, okay. We got a follow-up question from uh, Joseph here. He said he's already swapped it out three times for a new unit. So he's replaced his unit three times. Um, and he's tried downgrading the software and re-downloading the new software. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't even know where to start with that. What do, you, what do you guys have to say about that? 
Well, uh, I think that uh, with that, it's, I think it's a deeper, deeper issue that we could probably take a look at um, offline, um, rather than you know trying to to uh, troubleshoot it here. Um, I think that we already reached out to him to to contact our Netgear team, um, and we'll we'll try to uh, you know help out the best we can through through that that channel. Um, kind of following up. Okay, so there is a support ticket case. Thanks for providing that, Joseph. Um, you know, we can have uh, the team take a look at that and see how, uh, you know, how, how we can get that troubleshooting out to you. Uh, we've got another question from Steve Harris, who we've had to reboot our router at least one to three times a day. We've updated uh, with worst issues with losing uh, connection. It's really aggravating. Steve, uh, help us out a little bit. What model of uh, a router do you have? And uh, that will help us in, in kind of narrowing some of the, the, the things down. But uh, rebooting, you know, one to three times a day, um, that doesn't seem kind of normal. Um, and uh, it would help us if we know what, what model and uh, um, we can kind of go from there. Um, we got a follow-up from Richard Rodriguez um, who said... Um, he's tried all kinds of different setting resets. Um, the blog, all the blogs everywhere now are having the same issue. I think it might be a firmware issue. Um, he does have an RAX 200. Um, are, is anybody here familiar with any firmware issues on the current generation of the uh, RAX 200? Should we suggest that he uh, downgrades to a prior firmware update? Um, what do you guys think? No, for something like this, I definitely think he should um, contact us and um, we can have someone um, look into the issue because uh, random, unfortunately, random reboots is very, very hard to replicate. So getting um, direct information about his system. Oh, possibly uh, Richard downloading was actually the one that had the, the uh, static IP issue. Oh, the static IP. Oh, my mistake. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, I would say we do need to get... Um, more information about it and actually have um, someone look into the problem. I don't think that's something that we can um, directly answer right now. Sure, sure. So Richard, go ahead and uh, if you haven't already create a support ticket and you can uh, paste that number in the chat and we'll be able to um, to have that on hand and prioritize that one. Um, Another question came in from Steve Harris. I already read it. Um, he says he's rebooting his router at least one to three times a day. Um, we updated right. it with uh, worse issues um, and with losing connection. It's aggravating. And he says he has an AX8 an a Nighthawk. AX8. So, yeah, similar question for you guys. Um, do you know if there's any um, ongoing issues with the AX8 um, firmware? Not anything that engineering has passed off to us now. Okay, so this is likely an individual issue um so ha have we heard of this before should i should i pull up the knowledge base or are we aware of uh of an issue with the ax8 rebooting has that been uh brought up to us before not as a specific issue um with just about any router i've seen this sort of an issue happen um, at various times but there hasn't been something specific to the um, ax line got it okay Okay, yeah, so uh, <clears throat> Steve, uh, first suggestion, if you want to try to troubleshoot it yourself, is look on our knowledge base. That's going to be kb.netgear.com um, and see if you're able to find uh, somebody else having a similar issue. Uh, we do have uh, a pretty, pretty big community on there that does submit all their troubleshooting issues, so you may be able to find the answer there. Um, if not, uh, submit a ticket via the, method, the method that we uh, mentioned, mentioned prior, um, and you can paste your ticket number in the chat and we'll have it on hand. Um, we did just get a comment from Gabriel Lopez having uh, extender issues with the EX7500. Uh, um, Gabriel, go ahead and let us know um, more specifically what those issues are. Um, we should be able to help you out on that one. Cool. I'm actually going to well, we kind of have some uh, downtime. I'm going to see if I can find uh, any of this on um, 
Okay, Richard said that he also had an issue with the AX8. And then he switched to the uh, RAX200 to to um, try to fix those issues. And he's, he's still having issues on his RAX200. Is it possible that this is an ISP um, issue? No, normally if he's actually having to reboot his router, it wouldn't um, be the ISP unless the router itself is losing um, access to the internet. One thing that he can try is to narrow that down is when he's losing um, the connection, see if he can still access the router. If he still acts, if he can still access the router, then yes, it is um, an issue between the router and the internet as opposed to it being between the router and his client device. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. So I would actually suggest that to, um, let's see, it looks like Steve was having an issue with having to reboot his router. And then um, Richard is also also previously had that issue. Um, so that actually is a good suggestion, Michael. Try to access your router um, when your internet isn't working. It could be an issue with uh, dropouts from your ISP. Um, it could be an issue with your modem. And that's kind of just a reality of, of home networking is there are a lot of moving parts. You have your ISP, you have your modem, and you have your router. Um, if you do have a brand new router, uh, there shouldn't be these sorts of issues. So um, I would guess, if, I mean, if you've switched out your router three times, um, the issue is probably with something else. Um, so yeah, that was a good suggestion for Michael. Try accessing your router, even if your internet is dropping out. Um, and, and then I, I just want to, 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 to clarify for, for Gabriel, uh, you're having EX7500 issues. If you could put in the chat what that issue is, uh, we'd be able to to kind of better help you. Yeah, okay. Um, and then, yeah, we still have that question from Gabriel about the EX7500. Gabriel, let us know uh, what exactly the issue is. We should be able to help you troubleshoot that here. Um, let's see if I can pull any of these up on our knowledge base just to kind of give a demo of using our knowledge base here. So um, we had, let's just try uh, AX8 reboot to see what we can find on here. So let me pull up the knowledge base. Well, let me mute my Slack here. It's blown up. Um, okay. Um, okay, so I have the knowledge base open here. So if I let me go ahead and switch you guys over to my uh, browser view. So I have the uh, the knowledge base open here. So it's going to be uh, kb.netgear.com or netgear.com slash support. Either works. So I'm just going to look up um, AX8 um, reboot. Looks like that's the issue. And AX8 issues. So every morning I have to reboot the router to provide internet connection to my devices. This is getting old really quick. Do I need a better unit? So it looks like this this gentleman tried to uh, factory reset it. I don't know if that worked for him. It didn't seem like there was no resolution there at the end, uh, no update. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just trying to basically demo um, how to use a knowledge base. So if you haven't tried that yet, um, to anybody who is asking questions, um, that is a good way to try to troubleshoot on your own if possible. Um, obviously, it's not always possible to find your exact issue on the knowledge base, but it is a good way to try to um, figure out what could be wrong and what the solution might be without having to um, wait to talk to a support agent. Um, let's see. We have a comment from Richard Rodriguez. The internet or the interface for Netgear 
um, is not working. It's not as friendly as the old X10 interface. So I believe the X10 was using Genie. Is that correct? Um, I, I think so. You think so? Yeah, we have had, um, oh, we also have a comment from Gabriel here. Um, but yeah, we have had a lot of comments about the transition from Genie to the new um, software. Um, so we have definitely noted those and they are definitely something we've you know, been talking with software about. So um, we're hoping to improve on that in the future, but uh, appreciate the feedback. Uh, comment from Gabriel here is, um, he's running into an issue when he tries to connect his extender to his router. It does not connect, but I know I typed the right password, but it says the extender was not able to connect to the router. Okay, well, um, I'll do my best to take this one, but please, please jump in anybody and correct me if I'm saying the wrong uh, information here. Um, I have a, a EX8000 and an XR500, and I set it up via uh, WPS. Um, is that the best way to approach syncing up an extender, or should you be doing it through the My Extender interface? Um, what do you guys suggest? What do you think would help Gabriel here in this situation? Yeah, I agree with you that using WPS is um, usually the first way to go, and it's one of the easiest and um, the nicest way of connecting the two. I would also recommend double checking the um, SSID and password that he's got set up for his main router, that there's no special characters in it, odd characters, because even though you should be able to put just about anything in um, the password field, you never know if there happens to be a character in there that it just doesn't like. So if you stick with alphanumeric, you've at least removed that possibility. Cool. Um, so give that a shot, see if that works. There are like sync buttons, uh, the WPS sync buttons on each of the devices. And so if you if you click it on your, I believe you start with your router and then you go to your extender, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, yeah, it'll blink for I believe yes. two minutes, at least on the XR500. And then it, you can sync up during that two minute period if you click the, the WPS button on your extender. Um, I do want to go back and answer some questions um, for some people. I, I got some um, offline advice. Um, we do have a beta firmware that we can offer for the RX80 that could help fix your solution um, to whoever was mentioning their uh, RX80 or their AX8. Um, we do have some beta firmware that we can offer. So um, if they email us at that support line and mention that they were visiting the stream and that they would like to try that beta software, um, we should be able to forward that beta software to them and you can flash the new firmware and, and that should hopefully um, fix your issue. Um, so uh, that's something we can offer as an immediate solution. Well, not immediate, but um, a quick solution um, that might help you out. And then um, Richard, um, based off of your comment um, for the um, user experience on the web app, try actually downloading the Nighthawk app on your phone. Um, it's pretty easy to use and it might be an interface that is a little um, better for setup based off of the user, whatever you prefer. Um, obviously certain people prefer certain things, but that would be worth trying um, if you are looking to maybe factory reset and set up your router again. It's pretty intuitive on there. Um, we did get a comment from, um, apologies for butchering your name, um, Durbin Poison. Um, and he said, hi yeah, guys. Yeah, I could actually take that. Oh, go ahead. So, so he so he said hi. Uh, great job. You know, tough times. Thanks for the support. Just want to know: Will there be an update to the XR five hundred anytime soon, or does that fall into the Net Duma team? Well, we work very closely with the Net Duma team. Um, I can't tell you when, but I can tell you that there. I can tell you that there is uh, a, a, an update coming up. Uh, so look to our social media, and I can actually. Say, look to our social media starting, uh, you know, next week. We'll 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 start uh, giving a little bit more insight as to this this next update. Um, but uh, I can't say much more than that at this point in time. But but next week I can say a, a, a little bit more. How's that? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be a cool update. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's very uh, cool. I just yeah, gonna be pretty. Yeah, I, I know you guys have been been chomping at the bit for for an update and we've been working hard at making this update as comprehensive as we could possibly uh, your guys' suggestions over you know the last you know gosh over the last six months have been really uh awesome um and so we've been kind of taking some of that into account but uh 
but yeah, um, start looking around our, our social media and our community starting next week for a yeah, little bit more yeah. insight. I know for me personally, having seen some of it, um, I'm really personally excited um, just for the functionality increases um, and knowing that I can tweak my internet um, on my own very simply. Um, so we don't have any questions right now. So, oh, I lied. We have a question now uh, from Gabriel. Aha. Again, Aha. when he tries to connect his extender via WPS, it only connects to the 2.4 and not the 5. And I and I did everything in the process. Do you have any solutions? Um, just off the top of my head, if it, if it is connecting to 2.4, um, there is a possibility that you need to go into the My Extender settings and um, enable the 5 gigahertz uh band is there any comments from uh michael or darren that could help him out yeah yeah um he might be trying to set up the extender at the area that he wants the extender to be at a good uh thing to do is take the extender into the room where the router is and set it up completely there so it gets the best signal it gets all the settings and then take it to the place that you need it to be so it might be outside the range of the five gigahertz if, it, if it's too far out got it okay yeah try that see if that works um you know we didn't intend to do like a bunch of live troubleshooting here but we do still have an hour and a half left on the stream so if you want to go try it out and come back and let us know if it worked um you got an hour and a half then, to do that so um please feel free uh, right. if if nobody's you know using your internet right now um give that a shot we'll, we'll be here until um two o'clock pacific time which is going to be uh, another hour and a half about so um, feel free to try that out and come back, um, tinker with your my extender settings. Um, does anybody know the URL for the extender settings um, off the top of their head? It's like myext.com, something like that. Something like that. I, I, uh, not off the top of my head. We, oh, I don't we, either. We, we, we should be better prepared. Um, <laughs> I, I think but I, I do want to say... I, I do want to say thanks, everybody, for their, for their comments and their questions. My Wi-Fi ext dot net yeah. gotcha okay so my wi-fi ext dot net um well we yeah. can have uh angela jump that in the chat so that he can click on it um once he's tried that um proximity setup um okay cool yeah but yeah as i was saying just want to say thanks oh, go yeah, ahead. yeah go ahead sorry i i just wanted to say thanks for all the, the the comments and the questions we've been doing this for almost a half hour and you know just having all of these uh, you know, questions come up. That's exactly why we're doing this um, is to to get you guys, you know, some help, some answers. And, uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, hopefully we can solve your issues. Um, if not, we can try to solve them uh, on online. Uh, Chris, no, you are not first. There are about 40 <laughs> comments. Yeah. So, but um, good try. Uh, so yeah, just keep these, keep, keep the questions coming. So, uh, yeah, so but we really uh, do appreciate it. We are still available for comments, but I don't want to just kind of sit here and stare at each other. So, uh, while we're in this lull <laughs> right now, I, I did want to ask, um, you know, how do you, uh, me and, and me and Ben talked about this, um, in our last stream on Friday, but now that we've got Michael and Darren here, I, I'm, I'm curious to know, um, uh, do you have any commentary on like the state of the home networking industry as it pertains to, you know, we're all working from home now and, and kind of that, that um, you know, how it's becoming even more crucial to ha have good Wi-Fi. Like what, what is your experience now working from home and, and do you have any comments like for the broader population of that experience and, and, and as it's relative to Wi-Fi? Well, a lot of working from home has to do with the bandwidth that you have from your um, ISP and your internet provider. And we're definitely seeing a lot of people feeling the impact of having so many people working at home and chewing up the bandwidth. So um, the more push that can be done on the ISPs to increase their bandwidth to the local neighborhoods or homes will be helpful. And in your own home, the best you can do is make sure that you're getting as much of the bandwidth from your ISP as you can with the modem. You may need to upgrade your modem to a newer version if you have like a DOCSIS 3 modem upgrading to a 3.1, depending on what your ISP supports. And then the router that you have, you know, as fast as your clients can handle um, is, the top, is the router that you want when the Nighthawk line is great. And even if you're not getting extreme bandwidth to the internet, you're still handling all of the devices within your home talking amongst each other. 
Yeah, Darren, yeah, do you I have mean, any? Uh, uh, yeah, go, go ahead. Darren. Anything to add? Yeah, yeah, I, I I agree with Michael. This probably is really eye opening for the ISPs with this many people being connected at all times during the day. Now that they're all locked down at home, it hopefully this really helps them upgrade their infrastructure and get better and faster internet and stable internet for people so we can keep improving our router technology to keep up with that and provide great wi-fi for everyone at home yep. definitely and for those I, people I, I that totally are working agree. from home now they're probably just noticing places in their home where they're not getting um really good wi-fi because they don't spend a lot of time there but now the whole family is there and they're spread out throughout the home so things like Orbi is a good a good way of actually getting mesh Wi-Fi and pushing it around the entire home. If it turns out that there are places you're not getting good signals and you're now finding a lot more people needing to use the system at the same time in different places. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I uh, definitely. Yeah, we, we can we can speak to Chris's question, actually. Uh, Chris mentioned, how do you guys feel about some ISPs removing uh, data caps? And then kind of as a follow up on that is. Do you think that's going to help? Well, I can definitely yeah. start on that. Absolutely yeah. glad that they're doing it. And it's something they should have done, you know, a couple years ago, at least. The current ISP caps that a lot of them have are actually relatively small, considering the amount of data that home users are using now between just the general work, like we're finding working from home, as well as the streaming um, movies, where now we're trying to stream a lot of HD. And for anyone who happens to be a gamer like myself, if you go and download a new game to your PC, you're usually talking anywhere between 20 and 80 gigs of um, space just for a single game. And some of the ISPs, their data caps are like 250 gig a month, and you can easily blow past that. So them opening up the data caps hopefully will help in the future that they'll start raising the caps and stop keeping the caps down at something that really was good for maybe about 10 years ago. Yeah, I, I just want to add to that. Like, even with uh, some ISPs that have a data cap of one terabyte, uh, it's like with cord cutting and 4K, you know, tech, uh, you're chewing through so much bandwidth uh, during, during the day, especially when you have multiple devices. So, you know, if uh, you're doing video conferencing, uh, your kids are, are, are watching Netflix at 4K, um, and if you have, you know, another television, you know, running, you know, streaming service as well, you know, with like news or whatever, now you've got multiple devices all chewing bandwidth at the same time. Uh, and, and you could be, you could be going through about six gigs of data an hour just running, you know, 4k, uh, and with that, as, as, you know, as gaming, gaming, you know, traffic is very, very small uh, in comparison. Uh, it's, it's really going to be all of your big video streaming, big, uh, you know, kind of cord cutting that is really going to chew through your bandwidth um, during this time. Um, and, and so with that, I'm super happy that my particular ISP has... Uh, uh, remove the data caps for, for 60 days only. I think that the data caps really, uh, it, it really hurts. I've blown past a one terabyte uh, over Christmas vacation and, and that was due to, uh, you know, a family members watching, you know, Amazon Prime all the way through the whole yeah, totally. uh, week. And, yeah, and it's, and it's super quick at how that can add up. What I've noticed too is... Um, you know, with the age of streaming becoming the norm, I mean, I don't know how many of you guys still watch cable, but it, it's it's becoming the past. Um, we have a lot of ISPs that are actually providing, um, you know, free 4K TV boxes. Like, for example, I have Xfinity, and I went on to Xfinity uh, this past week, two weeks ago, and, like, I got this big pop-up that was, like, you know, free 4K streaming box. Like, you could hook it up to your TV and you know, stream in 4K. And it, it had a, uh, you know, I wouldn't have gotten it if it didn't have an Ethernet port, but I was like, I really want to wire it up so I can get like really crisp 4K. Um, and so I, I got it because it had the Ethernet port. And um, now I stream 4K everything. I mean, YouTube, Netflix, um, Amazon Prime, Hulu, it's all 4K now. And um, I'm a big movie guy and I have a roommate too that likes to watch movies. And we're chewing through 4K content every day for, you know, a couple of hours. And so that one terabyte 
I'll hit it easily. Plus now I'm working from home too. So, um, yeah, good points all around. Um, we did get some more, uh, more comments coming through here. Um, uh, since I've been working at home, there's been some issues with work versus Netflix. Somebody has been watching world war three. Is that a Netflix series? Um, but the XR 500 has really been great and helping with bandwidth. Um, Thank oh, you for no. for the praise. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, I, I think that was a West uh, West World season three. Oh, West World. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm out of the loop. <laughs> um, but uh, just looking, you know, looking at data, just to kind of get you the, the idea. Um, high quality video at, at 720 uses about uh, almost just shy of one gig per hour. Uh, 1080 uses 1.5. And uh, 2K, just 2K runs at 6 gig, and uh, your 4K uh, UHD is using about 7.2 gigs an hour. And as Chris said, you know, some cord cu cutters, uh, you know, at the end of the month, you're like, oh, God, I only have like 150, you know, gigs left. You know, I'm not going to be able to watch any, anything and still, you know, do productivity at home. Oh, we got a comment from John. Hello, uh, supposedly you got one gig up down from my ISP, did a test of the modem uh, to a laptop 600, but XR500 wired to the laptop is at four 400. Why such a difference? Uh, so do you have uh, anti-buffer bloat uh, uh, enabled for your uh, XR500 and the Duomo OS? Um, because what you're doing is you're actually sort of throttling your, uh, your, your speed by putting that reservation of bandwidth. So, uh, for example, I have uh, 300 uh, coming in, and I reserve uh, for gaming, I reserve about 100 because I have two Xboxes hooked up. And, and with that, so my speed is usually, if I want to ping out, uh, my my Xbox, it's at about 200 uh, milliseconds instead of getting that full 300 because I have that 100 millisecond, you know, I, a, a megabyte, uh, ugh, gosh, I can't talk right now. Uh, but I have that, that 100 uh, in reserve um, for when things get kind of crunchy where, you know, there's other devices that are, are competing. There's always that, uh, extra 100, which is like, think of it as a, a high occupancy uh, vehicle lane that I can get into and, and with uh, my gaming traffic. So that could be some of the discrepancy in your um, speed difference there. Um, you're still pulling in the full gig. It's the fact that you've got some of it in reserve as a reserve tank. Yeah, and if I could add to that. Um, so I'm actually going to swap over to my uh, Google Chrome here. Um, so we actually sort our uh, cable modems and cable modem routers um, here by their speed capacity. So if you look on the, uh, I don't know if you can see here, uh, let me see if I can zoom in on this, uh, on my interface here, but you can see that we have um, these sorted by their speed capacity. So if you're paying for gigabit speeds, you're, you're going to need to have um, gigabit capable modem. So I know you said you had the XR500, which is which is a router that is capable of gigabit speeds, um, or I believe 800 megabytes per second. You should be getting more than 500. Um, another possible piece is going to be um, your modem. So go ahead and look um, at this page here. Click on the, the modem capacity speeds and see um, what your modem that you have now is capable of, um, assuming it is a Nekir modem. Cool. So um, let me go back over to the chat here. Um, looks like we got a comment from, uh, apologies for pronunciation, Armin, Armin J. Um, I don't think that Verizon has any data caps on their gigabit network. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> I, I hope not. Yeah. Well, um, ben, what, what is your uh, service provider that, that um, just took the data caps away that, that, uh, uh, that was Comcast infinity yeah um, uh, got a, a follow-up from John yeah when enabled that makes sense which is best 
I I use when detected uh, for my setting, uh, mainly because I I I have a lot of uh, you know streaming you know cord cutting, uh, but um, but I want that priority when I have my uh, my Xbox or my gaming PC or the other Xbox uh, running at the same time. So I use when detected. Um, try that and see if that improves. Uh, uh, your your speeds when when you're not gaming um, and, and see if that that, that also uh, helps. The other the other thing you could do is you could uh, for that laptop if you're trying to get like more bandwidth to that laptop, I would go into the device manager and and just pull out a little bit more um, pipe for for that particular device. I do that for uh, my work computer uh, when it when it's not. Uh, when gaming isn't engaged, my work computer is the most uh, prior, prioritized thing in my home network. Yeah, totally. I, I, I'm, I'm actually going to add to that a little bit. Um, so I, I have an XR500 myself. Um, and um, so I, I also use the, the device prioritization. And that's, that's actually a really good um, tool to use if you do not have a Wi-Fi 6 router. Um, I know that last week, me and Ben talked a little bit about, you know, bandwidth capacity is is kind of supreme right now as, as everybody is kind of fighting for bandwidth at home as they're working from home you know i know ben's daughter is watching a movie right now <laughs> and um, you need to be able to either a have a have a router that can just handle all that traffic as is with default settings or b use uh, quality of service um, and i know that the xr routers make it incredibly simple to just click and drag what device is getting more bandwidth. Um, I know for me personally, I've prioritized, um, I'm streaming off of my, my, my work uh, laptop here um, and I've prioritized it. And, and obviously we're streaming from home. I have three video um, uh, inputs coming through my network. Um, I have three audio inputs coming through my network. I'm actually also streaming the, um, the stream live here on my, on my, on my Mac. And, um, thus far and we'll keep our fingers crossed we haven't missed a beat so that really goes to show the power of of quality of service and of having um a high performance um router um, yeah and i would also i'd also say going back and just you know uh, swinging back to a, a statement that, that that you had made earlier um i noticed a, a really good difference a, like a big difference actually when i swapped out my isp's gateway for uh for a better modem and it it really you know really helped clear that pipeline where now i'm getting a solid connection with the modem i don't have uh the the cable portion or the or, or the voice so all i have is straight internet coming through the wall um it goes into my uh cm uh 1000 and then it goes out to my router and uh, with that um you know, the cm 1000 is uh capable up to a gig um, so I'm, I'm seeing, even though I'm not getting a gig, I'm seeing, you know, more than 300 come in through the wall and it's definitely helpful, um, with the whole network being, uh, stable. Yeah. And actually definitely. to add to Ben's comments, I did the same thing and put a CM1000 in replacing the uh, modem that I had for my ISP. And I was able to get about 10% more download speed than what was actually in my plan just by swapping out the um, modem. Okay, so I actually have a question. Yeah, I'll attest to that. <laughs> um, even though I'm supposed to be the expert. Uh, so I have a switch running from my um, XR500 right now, and it's going into a... I know it's not the fastest solution, but it's going into a, uh, uh, what's it called, power line adapter, and then I'm running it to my media center. Um, so should I actually have that, uh, that switch wired into the modem or the router? What's going to give me faster speeds? Well, you need to have it um, wired into your router because the router is acting as your DHCP and giving out IP addresses to everything. So if you actually you bypass the switch, then um, everything would be getting um, your IP addresses from your modem. So yeah, you definitely want it um, in your router. Okay, and I've cool. actually done a similar thing that you've done using Powerline to extend things to different parts of my house. So I wasn't trying to um, do Wi-Fi extending. Instead, 
I use the power line to wire in a Orbi satellite so that it's hardwired in for its backhaul. And then I get the Orbi Wi-Fi from the satellite where I've um, put that in another end of the house. Gotcha. Well, that makes sense. Now, a, a follow-up question uh, for those uh, out there. Uh, the first, uh, John, uh, uh, thank you. Thanks for your, your question. Uh, but then following up on this, uh, for those that don't know, what is this power line? And, and, and what kind of solutions would you use something like that in? Do you want me well, to I can tell you how I'm using it? Cover that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You go ahead, Michael. Yeah, go ahead and say how you're using it first. Okay, so basically, um, I have a media center at home. Um, and since coming and working at Netgear, I've found it very, like, satisfying to just hardwire everything. It, it just feels nice when everything's, like, hardwired. I, I just like it. It's fun to have, like, everything kind of connected to a switch. Um, and I have the SX8000, which is one of the NPG switches. So it's sitting there on my... Um, on my media center and it looks cool. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, I, I didn't want to have everything um, at my media center taking up bandwidth. I wanted it to be hardwired in um, because um, we do stream 4K there. We do game online there. Um, I know it's old technology, but my roommate has a Steam Link. And so sometimes he'll be using the Steam Link, which, which can take a lot of bandwidth. And we didn't want that taking up the airways. We wanted it to just be hardwired in so that, you know, I'm up here on the second floor. Um, and I'm still able to get um, a solid connection because it's not being hogged downstairs at all. Um, and then second to that, I didn't want to run a wire across the hall, <laughs> like a physical wire. And we only pay for <laughs> yeah. um, um, 150 megabytes per second a month. Um, so any bottleneck that could occur because of the power line isn't really going to take effect at 150 megabytes per second. Um, that should be a plenty fast speed. Um, to allow me to use that solution. Oh, that brings up uh, another question that, that I have for everybody is, uh, or maybe it's a public service announcement or, or, or is, uh, because, you know, everybody's at home and everybody does have a lot of devices, uh, you know, like, you know, Chromecasts or um, Amazon Fires and those sort of things. One thing that you may want to uh, take a look at is uh, because in, in Roku television as well, where it has all of those sort of preloaded, and I know that Netflix shut this off, where it's the preloaded trailer that will run. Um, but the reason why your Chromecast has a lot of pretty pictures ready to go when you turn it on is because that is just pulling from the internet at all times. And so if you have... Uh, smaller bandwidth coming into the house and you have a couple of these devices, you might want to, uh, if you're you know, doing video conferencing or working during the day, you may want to disable those or, or, or at least reduce the amount of those because those are kind of constantly sort of vamping a little bit of, of your bandwidth as they're updating just to be ready in case you turn it on and you, and you want to see you know, uh, whatever show, you know, that, uh, you, the, so it can auto, uh, launch the, the trailer for, for whatever it may entice you to watch. So it's, mm -hmm. that's just, a, a another thing that's like a tiny little, little thing that's like just sucking just a little bit of your bandwidth away. Um, uh, and, and when, if every sort of, uh, you know, uh, bit is, is, is what you're counting right now. Um, that's that's something to also look out for. That's funny you mentioned that because I've um, done um, something about that in my entertainment center where I have a power strip where every single plug in the power strip has its own individual power switch. And so I can power off devices when I want to um, not have that sort of thing happen when I've got high priority um, internet access going on or I'm doing you know Skype calls that I can't have um, problems with. And also just in the general power savings is if you're not using them at the time, just flipping one switch and they're off until the next time you want them. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic solution. In fact, uh, now that I know about that, I'm going to go look for one of those those power uh, switches. Yeah, because I'm like, what? Those exist? Oh, yeah, uh, I've got quite a few of them around the house. Those are fantastic because, yeah, because, you know, you, you – you've got all these electronic devices and each one of them is like sucking a little bit of power, sucking a little bit of, uh, of, of networking. And so 
you know, how you can uh, best optimize, even from a, uh, a mechanical sense, uh, every little bit's going to, going to help. So, yeah, totally. Uh, and that could also reduce your yeah. power bill, you know, and so that's a pretty solid solution. Sure. I, that's what we're hoping. I might look into that too. And, yeah. And you'd be surprised with like the internet of things, uh, how many devices that you have. Um, it's, it's really, uh, just me and my daughter. And there's like, why is there 25 devices in our house? You know, it's because all these little things from your Kindles to your phones to your, uh, you know, game systems, PCs, uh, even toys, you know, connect up to um, the, the Internet and, uh, you know, refrigerators, microwaves. And, and, and suddenly you've got, you know, 30, 40 devices and really being yeah, totally. able to prioritize that is is huge in, in trying to make sure that you get that great connectivity for for video conferencing, working, uh, connecting to your VPN uh, tunnel to, to work. Uh, we got a comment from Chris. No wonder I reached data caps. I have four Chromecast <laughs> Ultras at my home. Seems like data is always running. Yes, uh, I, I I agree. So Stadia Stadia kind of takes a, because it's connected to the Ultra. It sort of sucks a little bit of bandwidth, which you know I've I've actually unplugged it. Uh, and, and, and when I want to use it, I plug it back in. Um, so that's kind of a, a, a weird, um, yeah. a weird one. I, I have power. I have they used to call those power vampires. Now these things are data vampires. Exactly. They're sitting there and just sucking away a little totally. bit of your data blood constantly. It, it, it's the, it's the same concept. You know, it's the exact same concept. Um, yeah, so reaching totally. out to the I, audience. I, uh, wait, hold on one second. Yeah. I, I, I do have a solution for Chris, but. Um, I do want to just send out a PSA a reminder to anybody who's joined us and doesn't know what the point of the stream is. Um, we're here to answer tech support questions. Um, so feel free uh, to ask any technical questions you have, um, any problems you're having with your router, your extender, your modem, anything. Let us know in the chat. Um, I just want to throw that out there again in case anybody has joined and just hears us uh, talking about networking and they don't know that we are actually here to answer questions. So um, quick reminder. Exactly. But, I was... I was just about to do that, and uh, so yeah, like get your questions, uh, launch them off. Uh, oh, uh, we got Gabriel back. Uh, I have a oh, or is it the, no? It's a different. We got no, two Gabriel. That's the no, same. That's the same, same Gabriel. Same Gabriel one. Lopez. Yeah. I have a uh, AT and T modem, and I pay hundred, and my router's only getting seventy five wireless. Do you have a solution? Um, so is it DSL or is it uh, cable? I think it's it's going to probably be DSL from um, from AT and T. Yeah, so that's, that's, a key, get, like, that's a key component. That's a that's a key component mm -hmm. because um, uh, then that that basically if you're getting also the other question would be are you getting uh, AT and T's cable? in and and their voice or you're just getting just their their internet service because that that puts you in a different spot for what sort of modem solution um uh we can recommend dsl dsl yeah so so gabriel um this is something that we suggest to pretty much anybody who has um isp equipment um <clears throat> you are paying i'm assuming double check your plan just to, to fact check me and, and make sure that i'm telling the truth here but you are paying month to month for that rental service to have the at and t modem um, so a lot of these isps um will when you sign up they will um oh he said he just has internet but my point still stands uh they will offer you an option to ship you equipment um, and that comes with the caveat that you pay a monthly payment. Um, well, as time goes on, um, you're going to be racking up those bills. And eventually, probably within a year or a year and a half, you're going to have reached the point where you could have just bought it from from a company like Netgear, um, who's going to sell you the equipment that you get to keep um, for a one-time payment. And then there's no recurring payment on that. So um, we always suggest to own your equipment, not only for that, that monetary reason, but also because... Um, ISPs really don't have too much incentive to give you good equipment. Um, they they can give you poor equipment and 
there's really no question to be asked there. You, you click the box that says, I want to rent equipment, and they're just going to send you whatever they got. It's, they really don't have an incentive to give you that high quality equipment. Whereas a company who's selling dedicated equipment like Netgear is always going to be coming out with new products to keep up with the times. Otherwise, we become an irrelevant company. We need to be keeping up, right? So um, I would always suggest um, look at our DSL modems, see what we're selling, um, and consider that as an option for all those reasons. Yeah, I, I, I could actually add one additional thing to that as well, um, which is that um, they, with the ISPs, all of the firmware on their uh, modems is locked um, because they have to verify it and qualify it in their own labs before they put it on there, which usually means that even if you have a, a modem that was manufactured by a known um, company, but it's being um, provided through the ISP, then you most likely will not have the newest firmware for that modem because there's a long lag time between them signing off on a new firmware and getting put on your um, device. Well, if you per purchase it and own it directly, then the newest firmware that comes out, you get right away. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, I put a link in the in the chat for uh, our DSL uh, modems. Uh, any one of those products is, is, is probably going to be a major upgrade from uh, AT&T. Uh, I did have AT&T uh, DSL, and I only could get 25 you know, where I was living. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I feel your pain. Uh, and as far as like ISP equipment, uh, I, I had an ISP that uh, I uh, restarted with and I hadn't been with them for like five years. And when I restarted with them, I said, hey, can you send me the latest gateway that you have? And they were like, yeah, yeah, sure, I will. Uh, and I was like, OK, great. Uh, are you sure it's like the latest and greatest part, like one that you got? Yes, absolutely. And when it arrived, it was the same Motorola uh, product that I had when I was with them five years before and uh, I'm probably sure it was you know refurbished or, or something so it, just to, to 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 really kind of build on that their their products that that they're providing to you and that you're going to rent they're they're really not incentivized to to give you uh, like the top of the line they're they're gonna it, it's gonna work but if you really want performance, um, it's it's really better to to go out and get the the necessary equipment that you have. Sir, yeah, and, uh, and just to add, sorry, one second, just to add, um, we just pasted that link in chat. Um, <laughs> I do, um, I did get a link from somebody um, here at Netgear. Um, we do have a frequently asked question page. So in addition to using the knowledge base as a potential resource, if we're unable to answer your question here because it's uh, something we don't know off the top of our head or it's something more technical, um, we do have a frequently asked uh, question page. So I'm gonna have uh, Angela actually put that in the chat um, so that you guys can check that out as kind of a, another wave of support if uh, we can't help you or the knowledge base can't help you. Um, give that link a shot. I'd actually would, I would try that before you try the knowledge base just because it's a little simpler to, to look at the frequently asked question page. But yeah, as Ben was saying, yeah. uh, we got a question from Jefferson V um, and it is, is there any plans for an upcoming firmware update for the Nighthawk AX120? Uh, um, we did hear from um, the support team um, that's watching um, that we are able to offer a firmware, a beta firmware for the AX8. Um, for those watching, um, I don't know if that is compatible with the AX12. Uh, if if it is, um, Jefferson, you could you could email us at support, mention that you're watching the stream and that you're interested in trying that beta um, software, and we can send it out to you actually. Um, yeah, but if yeah, it was for I, the AX8, it won't be cross-compatible with the AX12. But um, mm -hmm. send that information in anyway, because if a beta for the AX12 is available, then they would um, definitely let them know. Yeah, and as totally. far as firmwares, uh, with our products, you know, we are, you know, uh, it, it, we, we put out the firmware when it's ready to, to, to go out. And after we've, you know, done extensive testing, but we're always looking at improving our products. So, um you know, uh, we'll we'll try to communicate uh, as best as we can uh, to let you guys know when there's a, a firmware update. And then we got o, right. uh, OMG J Blaze that uh, needs help with his Netgear. Uh, so if you can give us a little bit more information, we can we can 
try to give you the help that, that you need. Yeah, let us know the model and kind of what the issue is. Is it is it dropping internet connection? Is it restarting? Um, let us know what the problem is, and we could we could probably help you out here. Yep, Mo model is most important though. Let us know what the model is. And if Armin and, and, is still and, and, listening, um, I did check, and the Verizon FiOS doesn't have any data cap limits right now. Nice, that's awesome. Oh, so yeah, let's all get Verizon back. FiOS. Yeah, let's all get Verizon. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that um, they had an ad on. Oh, what was I watching? I want to say Prime Video um, that basically said that they're doing their best to um, handle all of the increase in um, in internet usage, which I don't know if they always have had um, unlimited internet, um, no data caps, um, but they did mention that that's like a really big focus on their network and they said that they were the most prepared. So I can't speak to that being completely true. I'm not a part of their legal team, but um, Sounds like based off of their unlimited uh, uh, data usage, they, they were very well prepared. So good for Verizon. Yeah. Kudos to them. And then I don't know if Chris is still watching, but to go way back and answer one of Chris's questions, um, a uh -huh. lot of um, TVs, I do this personally, a lot of TVs have uh, USB ports. So if you are, and, and those are power, powered USB ports. Um, if you have your Google um, Chromecast, on your TV, um, you could plug it into there. And um, when you turn off your TV, it'll automatically turn off your Google Chrome. That's what I do uh, here at home. And um, every time I turn off my TV, it's not sucking in power or internet, which is great. Um, oh, we did good. get that's another great. legit question. Um, how can I open ports like 53 on my modem? Uh, I'm not sure. Somebody answered that question. <laughs> Yeah, that would really depend on the uh, modem that you had um, as to whether or not it allows you to um, open up or port forward any of the um, ports. Usually, if it's from your ISP, they have their modems locked down um, pretty tight. Otherwise, you could go in, depending on the particular modem you have, and see whether or not you can. Since um, port 53 is what is, um, normally systems use for DNS, it may not be a port even if you can do port forwarding. That would be something you have to actually look into a little bit more. Yeah, that's a very technical question, um, but hopefully that information from Michael helps out. Um, if you need any more help or you want to have your question answered further, um, search um, port 53 on our knowledge base. Um, I pulled that up earlier. I don't know if you were viewing the stream at the time, um, but that's going to be kb.netgear.com. Um, and you'll be able to see if anybody else has any commentary about that. But um, hopefully Michael's knowledge can help you out um, as it was. Um, we got a comment from uh, Jose Hernandez here. Um, we have 400G and my internet keeps going in and out. Do I need to get a new router? My living area is 2,400 square feet. That's pretty big. <laughs> um, that is, I had that to is, guess. That's a big area. You're going to need a either a very strong router just the router um, or you could try to work with a mesh system which would be probably the better solution um, obviously it's going to be more costly to set up a mesh system um, although we do have a lot of new introductions to our portfolio of more affordable uh, even wi-fi 6 um, mesh options so um, i would say uh, your primary your best option is going to be a wi-fi 6 mesh system if you're looking to save uh, money uh, check out the MK62. That should serve you pretty well for the uh, 2400 square feet. Um, or if you want to just get a router and be done with it, um, I would suggest looking at maybe uh, an X10. Uh, that's a pretty solid router. Or even go to Wi-Fi 6. Um, look at the AX8, uh, AX12, X20, um, RX200. Yeah. Um, those are also going to be able to probably fill your whole house with uh, solid Wi-Fi. Any other suggestions? Okay, yeah. for you? Yeah, I, I I would say with that amount of square footage, I would I would definitely look at some sort of uh, mesh extension. Um, we do have a, a a mesh extension in the Nighthawk Pro Gaming, but uh, it really it it depends on 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 what you are looking at. If if you're really looking at a gaming solution, then the the XRM five seventy. But if you're looking for 
uh, you know, just general purpose, then I, I would look more towards the, the Orby line or the Wi-Fi 6 uh, Nighthawk. Definitely. Um, we got another question um, from Gabriel Lopez. Gabriel, thanks for sticking with us. Um, firstly, um, one more question is when he logs into his router to go and go to device and see a device that has high priority and try to lower it, it does not lower it. It stays the same. Do we have any solutions? Um, I think that's a Michael question. <laughs> yeah, I haven't actually yeah. seen a problem here, um, at least on the routers that I've been um, working with, where if I change the device priority, that it doesn't actually um, save the setting that I um, set. Um, knowing which um, router it is might help a little bit. But something like that, it could be a problem you know, with the um, router's um, software or firmware um, that's causing it not to save. But normally, you should be able to save the, that priority once you've set it. Definitely. Okay. Um, we got a lot of questions coming in, so let's uh, move on to the next yep. one. Uh, Gabriel, let us know if that works for you, and, and you can follow up with us, and, and we'll be here for about another hour, a little less. Um, we got one from Dan. Um, my Chamberlain. Uh, is that a is that networking equipment? I'm not sure what that is. Um, it sounds uh, like a piece of client equipment that they have. Client equipment. Okay. Uh, needs two different ports to work. Only phone. I have a CM400. Uh, two different ports to work. And that's a, phone. Is he yeah, aggregating that's a follow ports up. for a phone? That, that, this is a follow-up to the uh, 53 oh, 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 oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. opening. Um, okay, well, I don't have... And normally what you're going to do is you're not actually going to be opening those ports on the... Um, CM400 um, modem, you're actually going to do that on your um, router. Okay, yeah, we got and a then the modem from... will just pass through. Gotcha. Um, hopefully that helps out. Uh, please follow up if you want to uh, further that question. Um, we got a comment from Rodney here. He just bought the uh, RBK53. He has Spectrum with their tower router. Should I connect? the Orbi router directly into their router, or should I plug it into their modem? Um, so for your Orbi router, which is going to be the one with the blue top, that's just a little side note. That's how you tell. <laughs> um, you're, yeah, you're going to completely unplug your uh, Spectrum tower and just use the modem. Um, there's no reason to be running two routers, um, and it's designed to be plugged into a modem. So that should answer your question. And then you'll be able to use um, WPS to sync the Orbeez. Um, yep. we have another one from, oh, I'm, I'm going to butcher this and I'm so sorry. Uh, Adalberto, I apologize. Um, <laughs> uh, optimum internet keeps getting constant outages. Internet keeps going on and off and experiencing slow speeds. Uh, he's in the New York area. He's getting a high ping and I have a Nighthawk AX 12 system. Any advice? Um, Darren, you want to, you want to try to help him out? Any, any tips here? Uh, I mean, I don't know if we can give much advice if, if, if it's an internet issue that keeps going off for the ISP. If they keep losing internet, it's just really unstable in the area, I'm guessing, because everyone in New York is locked down at the moment. I, I don't really know, unless he's saying yeah. that it, it is an issue specifically with the router going out, not just the internet. It sounds yeah, like the internet, though, is still working because he says that he's getting a high ping. So yeah. that means he's still getting out to the um, internet. Um, and so most likely the high ping is the fact that they've just, their internet is just getting extremely clogged right now because everyone is staying at home and mm -hmm. it's such a high density um, area. Yeah, and it's, it, he's, he's also tried switching channels uh, and Optimum reports no outage. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with Optimum, but I'm, probably going to guess that they're a cable uh, modem or a, a cable provider for for your internet and with that uh, you, you could be because there's so many users uh, cables is broken up into nodes there could be a lot of of users on your particular node which is basically uh, overrunning uh, what it's uh, its capacity and that's going to cause massive slowdowns um, and, and you're going to get high ping because uh, you're going to be basically in a very, very, think of it 
as uh, you're in the internet DMV um, and you've got a very long queue to, to kind of work your way through because everybody is is there. Well, yeah. they're in a big New like York traffic analogy. jam. <laughs> yeah. And I know that New it's York traffic, is very yeah. affected currently. And so I'm, I'm sure literally everybody is working from home right now, plus the density. Um, yeah. I would assume that that would really contribute to the issue. Um, I am, I'm not sure what your modem is currently. Um, if you are using an old modem, um, that doesn't help. Um, and if, you, if you're looking for a quick potential solution or at least a, a bandage, so to speak, um, you could look into upgrading your modem. Uh, I, I do have a here at, at my home, um, a CM uh, 1200, and that's top top of the line, one of our better modems. Um, I think that is our our best modem, <laughs> um, and I'm not experiencing any of the issues that people are complaining about in this area regarding um, too much traffic, um, just because that is such a powerful um, modem, but. I don't want to give that as a, as a solution and promise you that it'll fix it. Um, it's not like a one-stop shop issue, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of above our, our, our reach to being able to fix the ISP. Um, we have another question from Jefferson V. Um, he has the AX12 set up with the Verizon Fios, and he's never had any problems whatsoever with the router. Oh, he was offering it. He was he was trying oh. to help out. Um, he says, check with your ISP. Well, I'm glad you're having a good experience with our router, Jefferson. Thank you so much for commenting. Um, we have another question from Rodney. Um, should, should I have internet access through the Orbi? It shows that I'm not connected to the internet, but I have Wi-Fi. Um, Michael? <laughs> yep. You're the Orbi expert. Well, the, yeah, there's um, two different pieces um, when you're actually going out to the internet. The first is between your um, client using Wi-Fi to your Orbi, and then the Orbi's connection going out to the internet. And it sounds like what it's saying right now is that yes, your clients can talk to your Orbi device within your home, but actually getting out from the router to the internet, that portion is down. And um, that would be the reason why it's telling you that you're not actually connected to the internet, but you do still have um, local Wi-Fi. You can try rebooting the router and see if that um, corrects it. Um, otherwise, it'll take a little bit more troubleshooting to find out why your router is no longer um, talking to the internet. Yeah, it, well, this is a follow-up question to, to him uh, setting up his his uh, Orbi on Spectrum. Um, and so I just dropped in a, a KB uh, article, or knowledge base article on how do I set up my Orbi router in satellite. Uh, just kind of follow through that process and, uh, and, and see if that helps. There may be a step that you may have missed um, and, and follow, follow that process and see if that, that does anything to help. Yeah, uh, I, would, I would echo all of that. Um, not much, not, you, guys, you guys covered it, not much to add there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, we got a comment about using um, the Aris, I, I, you put smart board, but I think you meant surfboard because <laughs> when I looked up smart board, it popped up like those like um, elementary school, like pen <laughs> projector boards. <laughs> I think you meant surfboard. Um, I was very confused, but um, I think I found it. Um, based off of what you just said, I believe that is a um, Doxis 3.0 modem. Um, the newer generation is, is Doxis 3.1. Um, that, that's going to kind of help you pull more out of the grid. Um, correct me if I'm explaining this wrong because I'm not an expert on modems, but that's going to kind of help you pull more out of, of the available internet in your area um, and potentially improve your, your ping and your connection. Yeah, it actually allows it to um, use more bands that are um, being transmitted so it can bond more of them together for the information coming down. So if one of the bands is more congested, they might be able to get some more speed off of the others. So it definitely could help. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's the the correct answer to my poor analogy. <laughs> um, thank you, Michael. Cool. So it uh, looks like we caught up on all the questions. So um, guys, please feel free to keep filing in more questions. We're going to be here for another um, looks like 45 minutes or so. Um, so uh, we're on the latter half of the uh, tech support stream. Um, but we, we've had a great time answering all these questions. Um, if you, even if you think it's a silly question, we're, we're happy to answer it. Um, but in, in the meantime, um, I'm curious to know, 
Um, we kind of talked about state of the industry, obviously. Um, but I'm, I'm curious to know. Oh, pause. Let's answer these questions. <laughs> we got two more that just popped in. Um, one more um, from Adalberto. Um, one last question. Does the AX12 support one gig internet speed? Yes, it does. Um, how would I go? How would I go if I get a one gig connection and I need if I need to hook it to the AX12 router? It's in the same process. process as long as it's as not a FiOS connection, they would be connecting just directly into the um, WAN port on the AX12 and following the setup the way you normally would, since the AX12 already handles um, gig internet speed. Yeah, but um, one point to add to that, um, he did mention what his his modem is, um, and I pulled it up on Amazon here, so I, I can I can actually. Am I allowed to show other people's products? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> I'm popping over here to it's the for comparison's sake. I, I, I don't want to get in trouble. Um, it looks like, firstly, this this is an older product. Um, I can already tell you that based off of it being um, Doxus 3.0. Um, the newer generation yeah. is Doxus 3.1, and so um, based off of what Michael already mentioned about having more bands and then creating more connections, this isn't going to be able to, to do that in the same way that a, um, a Doctor 3.1 modem would. So um, that's one issue that you're already facing. But a second issue is this is rated for 686 megabytes per second, um, which is obviously done in a controlled lab environment. So in your home, you're not going to, you're probably not going to get that high of a speed. Um, you're going to want to look to get a, a one gigabit um, rated modem. Um, so if we head over to um, Netgear cable modems, and I, I showed this to somebody prior, um, we're actually able to sort on this page here on our store. Um, let's see, where, where is it? Uh, cable modems. You, you you're can able sort to by sort speed. by speed capacity. So let me zoom in here a little bit on, on, the, on the stream. You're able to sort by speed here. So um, I'm able to, oh, you can't see my cursor on the stream. Um, well, it doesn't matter, you can still see it. You're able to sort by speed. So you wanna be clicking, um, you know, I, I think 960 would be high enough if you wanna go with that option, but you, you wanna click all of these options here. So, um, oops, uh, 960, 1.4 and one. Oh wait, hold on. Sorry, you'll just wanna click 160. So. Um, I'm sorry, I can't speak. Uh, 960 megabytes per second. Um, so these four are rated for at least 960. Um, we do have one that is a Doxus 3.0 modem and you could go with that and it would serve you well, um, but you're gonna wanna go with the option that um, is Doxus 3.1, just because that is the newest generation. If you're looking to future-proof, I, I think future-proofing is not entirely possible, but if you want to have it last long, um, you'll go with the 3.1 option. Um, obviously, there's a big price difference there. So if you want gigabit speeds um, and you're not wanting to spend this much money, you can go with the CM600, um, and that should get you around a gigabit when you're paired with the AX12. Um, but with, with your current equipment, I, I, don't, I don't feel safe saying that you would get gigabit speeds with the AX12 um, with your current modem. Let me just adjust my... Uh, Go ahead, Michael. Also, one additional bit of information to add to um, what you put in is a lot of ISPs, they actually limit the maximum speed on DOCSIS 3.0. So even if um, you, know, you have all of your other equipment to one gig, the ISP itself has set the maximum speed they're going to give on 3.0. Even though 3.0 theoretically will go all the way up to one gig, they can limit it to like 720 um, megabits a second. And until you move over to 3.1, you're never going to get any speed faster than that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. He said he's gonna have a tech come out and install his modem. Um, and then he said he's gonna he's gonna try the one that we just displayed. Yeah, um, definitely let us know if yeah. it works well for you. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be doing this uh, at the very least on, on a weekly basis. So let us know how that works out for you. And if you need any more help, we'll be here to help out. Um, but if you have a technician coming in, I'm sure uh, he or she will be able to set it up just fine. Um, so to well, catch up on some other. I have a quick answer for Rodney. Uh, your, your, the ring should be blue if uh, the connection between the router and the satellite is uh, properly set up. So you should be seeing that blue. If everything is, is, is going well, uh, you should be seeing that blue. 
Yeah, for the first, I think it's two minutes or five minutes, they have that set when you're um, setting it up. But once it's finished being set up, then that um, ring should um, go off. Yes. Cool, cool. Um, yeah, so I think we caught up pretty much all the way. We have an, another question. Um, he, it's actually two questions. He has the XR500. Um, he lives alone. And if he puts anti-buffer bloat to 70%, um, will it have any benefits for him, uh, for his ping? Uh, it, so 70%. So I, I'm going to uh, fire back two questions uh, for you. Is one, how much bandwidth uh, do you have coming into your home? And then two, uh, how many devices do you have? Um, if it's just you and you've got like a PC and a gaming PC and like a console and you're only gaming on one thing at a time, uh, you know, I would I would set it so that way you have, you know, between 20 and, and 30 percent uh, in reserve on the anti-buffer bloat. I think that that would be fine. Um, if you have multiple devices that are pulling in, like, you know, streaming, like Netflix or, or your, as we talked about, Amazon Fires or Chromecast or something like that, then I would, uh, uh, then I would set it for a little bit more. Now, my IS is putting me on bridge mode and I have a static IP. Why do I have, uh, so is having the, uh, um, the router into bridge mode so the so in my understanding the router is not actually doing any of the the thinking the gateway is still doing the thinking is that correct michael um actually let me check the question putting the isp is putting me in bridge mode normally you're putting bridge mode in on your modem not on your router and um then what happens is the signal um, coming from the internet goes straight through the uh, modem. So the modem isn't handing out IP addresses and it hits the router and then the router is the one that actually manages everything internally and handles out, handles the IP um, information. Um, yeah. You don't always have to put things in bridge mode, but a lot of times it's an easy way to create that bridge from the internet directly to your router instead of having the modem try to handle any of the traffic that's going through. So, so with that, I would make sure it, it, the the question would be, uh, what is getting put into to bridge mode? Is it the the is it your XR five hundred? Um, yeah, and and if the modem is being put in bridge mode, that shouldn't be any cause for um, ping spikes or um, lag. Yeah, because and it literally is just waiting, passing everything um, through. While we're waiting for his follow-up, I just wanted to, to mention, I, I, got, I heard word from um, support that there there is a um, a beta firmware for the AX12. So I don't remember who asked that question, but if you're still in the chat, um, if you email us at that support email, and I'll actually have Angelo dump that email back in the chat, um, we can send you that that beta um, firmware. Now, we are, we're not able to guarantee that it fixes the issue. I just want to put that out there. It, it that could have been for a different issue, but just, just to mention, wanted to follow up on that. Um, I, I know that uh, we already have uh, the remaining question about the XR500. So, Ben, did you want to answer that? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so my next question with that would be, uh, what device are you gaming on? Uh, because uh, that could also, you know, I just want to make sure that we kind of lock down w everything that it could be. Because uh, he's now saying that the, the, the modem is in bridge mode. And so then the XR500 should be doing the prioritization and the IP um, uh, addresses. Yes. Uh, and if you have a static IP, uh, and if you are reserving, you know, you're reserving uh, a ton of bandwidth right now, 70% of your bandwidth. So from that 55 down, of, I would recommend 50% at 55 down, which uh, the plate PS4. Um, and you're still having spikes. Now, if it was an Xbox, I would recommend, because Xbox uses the uh, ID version, uh, IP version 6, uh, and they, uh, so I would recommend turning that on. Um, but I'm not sure about the PlayStation 4. Uh, Darren, you want to take a, take a crack at this one? 
Uh, for, what what for the PlayStation Four? I was looking into another so, question. Sorry about that. <laughs> sorry about that. So he's he's got fifty five coming down. He's got his uh, anti buffer bloat set to about seventy percent. Uh, the modem is in bridge mode and it's coming in on a static IP and he's still having uh, ping spikes on his PS4. Still having ping spikes. Is he using any of the geo filtering settings to like connect to better servers or? Uh... That don't know yet. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, and also whether or not the PS4 is in the device manager as a preferred priority, high priority device. Uh, that's another thing. There's, there's like three levels of um, prioritization. Um, so for me with my Xbox, I make sure that it's on the, the, the geo filter. Um, I make sure that it's in the uh, uh, QRS as a, as a preferred device. Yep. Okay. So he's said he's tried, tried that and so you're still one, getting one um, problem that we've run into is is the ps4 um the networking equipment on board the ps4 is a little older and we have found that a lot of the times it's just unreliable as a system um i don't want to say that that is the problem because there could be an issue with the settings on your equipment um and so definitely try out some of what we've suggested. I know you said you've tried everything. You've tried everything, um, but we do have issues with PS4s very often. Um, that, that's a very common incoming question: is what's up with my PS4? Yeah. And we found that it 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 is sometimes just it's not very well equipped for for online. Yeah, he he's got it wired in as well uh, with Cat Six. That. Uh... I, I think with this, you, I think this may be something a little bit more that we, that we could take offline um, and, and, and contact contact him back in um, because there, there's a couple of different settings uh, through there that uh, you know could could make some improvements. But then again, it's you know it's PS4. It, it 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 does make it a little bit more difficult to track it down. We got a question from Gabriel, um, also about a PS4 having network issues. <laughs> um, sometimes and, and a completely different router as well. So yeah. It's... Yeah. Um, he says yeah. he has lag spikes um, on an R seventy nine hundred. Um, any advice on how to fix that? Uh, the 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 next thing with that question would be: Are you wired or or, or wireless? Um, uh, he says he's on Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, yeah. Yeah, and yeah, wi Wi-Fi would be the first thing to look at, just because you can always get um, you know spikes in um, Wi-Fi, random noise that's coming through. If you're on 2.4 and you turn on a microwave oven, that creates huge amount of noise. So um, if it's possible to be wired in, that would be a good um, way to at least test to see if the spikes are being caused by your Wi-Fi or something else in the um, system. Definitely good advice. Um, we got a follow up. Um, when I'm not on bridge mode, I don't have any problems. Interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, that shouldn't make a difference. But um, if it does, he doesn't have to have his modem in bridge mode. Um, that's just a way to get around the modem doing you know, trying to do other things, managing traffic. But um, you can have a modem not in bridge mode and plug your router directly into it. And the only issues that you might run across is um, if your uh, modem is also a router and it's got Wi-Fi built in, then you're going to end up with two sets of um, Wi-Fi SSIDs. Yeah, and I would I would turn off the 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 first thing I do turn off that Wi-Fi. Yes. Uh, on the uh, the gateway. Yeah, when you when it's in bridge mode, the Wi-Fi should be off anyway. But if he if it works without bridge mode, then yeah, just go in and turn off the Wi-Fi in the uh, modem, and then the rest should basically be invisible to him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I think we, unless he has any more follow-ups, uh, I think we're caught up again. Um. So I, I the question I was going to ask. 
um, before we were trying to catch up on questions was um, how is all of your experience, your, your individual experiences working from home and what equipment are you using? And is it managing the, the workload, um, the internet load well? Um, are you struggling at all with dropped calls, with dropped video? Um, how's it been going for you guys personally? Well, I can say for myself, it's been going great. Um, I currently have my system set up with um, the Orbi system for my um, Wi-Fi running through a R9000 as my main router to a CM1000. And um, all of that's been running you know, nice and smooth. It does help that I live up in the mountains here, so the number of people that are on my um, Comcast node is relatively small, so I'm not be con being heavily congested with other people. But with that setup, everything's been working nice and smooth, no drop calls, no um, problems online gaming. That's good. That's good. What about you, Dave? That's good. Uh, I have AT&T Fiber Gigabit. Uh, so I have to use their modem, but I use uh, XR700, uh, and then that's connected through... Uh, I have a gaming switch, the Netgear gaming switch in my room. But our whole home is uh, wired with Ethernet. So it's easy. We can run a lot of uh, wire connections, and I've been really stable. What about you, Ben? Uh, so I'm running a CM1000 from from the wall to an XR500, and then from there to an SX10 a gaming switch, which then populates out to uh, my Xbox and uh, my streaming uh, PC. Um, and then also uh, I've got like a Sonus that is also plugged into that as well. And then from there, uh, I've got a, uh, uh, a EX uh, extender, which uh, is powering the Wi-Fi in the back bedrooms through mesh, which then goes to um, the uh, Xbox in the back bedroom is uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, and then uh, my work laptop is Wi-Fi. Um, there's a Amazon Fire on the TV in the back bedroom that is uh, Wi-Fi. And then uh, my main TV I've actually wired in. Um, and so the the priorities that I've set in uh, the Dubo OS is mainly for everything that's in the living room, which is the Xbox X, the TV, and, you know, more of the entertainment type stuff. Uh, and then the secondary stuff is, uh, you know, my daughter's Xbox and and her uh, Fire Stick. Sorry, sorry, Ursula, but uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, from there, it's been working really good. I did have uh, I was streaming on mo uh, Monday or Tuesday. I don't know the the days all kind of go together. Uh, but I was streaming and I had a little bit of some drop. Uh, frames while I was streaming and I, I believe that's because I was running Wi-Fi to the streaming PC at that time and also trying to run a ridiculous amount of my bit rate which was at uh, I think 6,500 once I dropped it down it smoothed out uh, but yeah there was so far not too bad everything's been working great definitely. and I have 300 up through through the, the wall definitely um we did get two more questions, but I'm just gonna quickly explain what I'm I'm working with here at home. Um, so I have the uh, CM 1200, which is really overkill, but um, I have it, and um, I'm running that on an XR 500, um, and then that is what's broadcasting Wi-Fi to my room, which is which is upstairs. So I have all that equipment downstairs, and I'm running um, just Wi-Fi, no hardwiring to my room. Um, and I'm currently on a, just a, a MacBook and it's, uh, I'm running this whole stream off of wireless actually, which is really, really crazy to think that I'm running the stream on wireless. Um, I do have over That's here. Been nice on, and smooth. Yeah. There's been really no big issues. I have over here on uh, OBS, which is the, the software I'm using. Um, I've dropped in the, uh, hour and 37 minutes we've been live. I've only dropped, um, uh, 59 frames, um, which is equivalent to two nice. seconds. So um, we are running really smooth, even off of wired, uh, I'm sorry, wireless, um, on two different stories, which is really impressive. And um, aside from that, I mentioned I have my media center all hardwired um, through uh, 
power line adapter um, and an SX8000, which I really, really love um, having all of that hardwire. There's nothing downstairs except for my roommate's bedroom that is using Wi-Fi. It's all um, using wired, which is really nice to keep the airwaves clear. Um, but to catch up on the questions, because we did get some questions while we were talking about our equipment. Um, yeah, and I, I did look up uh, on uh, for Jose, and then uh, for uh, the the double net, I have a answer to that too. Let me try to find that. Uh, but for Jose uh, on the uh, modems uh, with Spectrum, our CM series of of modems are all uh, compatible with Spectrum. It all depends on what um, your speed is. Um, and so uh, I'm going to just drop this uh, chart in from from Spectrum uh, that uh, has, you know, basically whatever your speed is, you just kind of click on it and they will um, uh, uh, show you which ones are are. Uh, compatible but almost all of our our cm series are compatible yeah and ben make sure that you're putting that in the youtube chat because the last link that you put was somewhere else yeah i in uh, the youtube chat the youtube chat really it didn't pop up yeah as a comment um i don't see it <laughs> yeah, i'm not seeing it on mine yeah so send it send yeah. it to angelo and then angelo can uh can paste it in there um and then yeah, just to follow up on Jose's question, um, if you want to find out about your what you already have, um, look on the bottom and find that model number, and then look it up. Um, it, you know, we, we don't want to sell you something you you may not need. Um, if you are happy with having it, if it is three point one, and you want to stick with that, um, three point one is great. Um, if you want to upgrade from 3.0 to, to R3.1, um, that would be great um, for your performance and also saving money um, in the long run. So even if you do have a 3.1 Spectrum modem and you want to save money in the long run and avoid those rental fees, that's also an option. Um, but just to answer your question about what model yours is, um, definitely check the bottom. It should be on the like near the serial number. Um, we got a comment from Jefferson V. Um, he wishes his MacBook would support Wi-Fi 6. Me too. <laughs> I have um, the brand new 16-inch MacBook, and it's Wi-Fi 5. <laughs> I think. I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's Wi-Fi 5, which kind of sucks for how expensive it is. Um, and, and then if I could jump here real quick, uh, I just sent the double NAT guide uh, for uh, Dynamenth menthos mm -hmm. or um and so that should be the double night uh double nat it's our uh guide for clearing out uh nat uh issues with any of the xr uh routers yeah and these days most products have no problem being double natted but i know some of the game consoles still do yeah um we have another comment from uh, Adalberto. He says, do you recommend hooking up the one gig internet speed modem on the multi-gig router port or the regular uh, WAN port um, on the AX12? For the one gig connection, it doesn't really matter um, which one that you're actually connected um, to. Um, I would probably hook it up to the um, one gig port if I was planning on having other devices in my home that are multi-gig. For instance, I have a ready NAS here that has a 10 gig port on it. So I'd be connecting that up to my router using the multi-gig port. Got it. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question. Let us know if there's a follow-up there. Um, Armin said that he left a message in the YouTube chat. Um, did we miss your message? If, if we did, let us know. You can you can enter it again and we'll, we'll address it because we are currently all caught up. Um, Snoop Tiger says access point or router mode. Um, what would that be on? Um, let, let us give it us a little more like detail. It sounds like when you're actually setting the router up. Mm. Yeah, when you first set any of our routers up, um, it will, um, if it recognizes that there's another device that um, it's plugged into that's acting as a router itself, it'll ask you whether it wants to be put in access mode or router mode. Um, most of the time you want to have your router put in um, router mode unless you specifically are just using it as a dumb access point. 
Gotcha. Yeah, that should answer your question. Let us know if there's any follow ups, then we can we can uh, we can chat with you. Um, got a final comment from uh, Dynam Dynamenos. Um, thank you a lot for your help, guys. Um, are we going to have any new updates for the Netgear XR five hundred? Ben. Uh, so the the easy answer, and I, I was asked this question earlier. Uh, yes, we will have some updates. Can I tell you today? I can't, but I can tell you uh, that we're going to start uh, talking about it starting next week. So pay attention to our uh, Nighthawk Pro Gaming social media and community channels uh, for more information next week. Yeah. Okay. It looks like we were able to help uh, Snoop Tiger. So. Um, let us know if there's any follow-ups there and we'll help you out. Um, he wants, okay, then we have Armin. He said that his question was, just wanted to know what Docs 3.0 modem would be compatible with Verizon Fios. Um, all of them, correct? Really, this is more um, of a question yes, of except, how much speed do you want? Oh. Yeah, I think he might also be, um, with this though, it has to be something that actually plugs directly into Fios and not all of our cable modems are going to be supporting Fios. Got it. Okay. And we actually, there is a KB article talking about how to hook um, Netgear modems up to a Fios system because they don't support Fios directly. Um, let's see. I'm just looking at our product page. If there's any way to sort by that. Looks like there's not. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to give us like a price range, we can maybe suggest exactly what you, like exactly what you need. Um, I, I don't, I don't yeah, know. I just posted like... in the KB article on um, connecting a Netgear router with Verizon Fios. Gotcha. Um, I I don't know what's up, but I'm not seeing that in the chat. So maybe send that to Angelo, and oh. then Angelo can post it from the Netgear account. But um, yeah, Armin, if you want to just let us know kind of what what you're looking to to get. Um, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's like an uncomfortable thing to ask for a price range, but if you want to give us a price range, we we can give you exactly like what we would suggest. Um, yeah. Okay. I think we caught up on everybody. Um, guys keep asking questions. We've got 18 minutes left. Um, you know, if, if we're answering a question, um, we'll go a couple min minutes over if need be, but, um, yeah, it looks like we're all caught up. Any other, uh, any other comments about working from home has, um, oh, let's see. Jefferson is seconding the question from Armin. So um, check out that KB article or let us know um, any more information. We can try to suggest something for you. But um, any other comments about working from home? Like how, how's it, um, aside from your network, but ha has, have you been as productive at home? Do you feel like it's uh, it's been challenging now that we've been at home for uh, over a week now? Um, are we all settled in to work? I miss my home? three monitors. Yeah. <laughs> that three monitor <laughs> setup at work, you know, you get really used to having that. I, I miss my office chair, <laughs> to be quite honest. Uh, like, just trying to find a comfortable spot to 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 work from, uh, you know, uh, is always uh, the, the challenge. Uh, as far as productivity, uh, I think that some productivity has, has, has gone up and others have gone down. I think collaborative stuff is more difficult working from home. But uh, just being able to, to sit down and fire out, uh, you know, some, you know, work where I don't need to, to, to work with somebody else, that's had a boon. I, you know, I had zero, dis you know, mostly zero disruptions. Um, and, uh, but I think that the collaborative portion that's what i really sort of miss it's really uh, meeting on you know a virtual or, or or meeting on conference calls is one thing but it's really hard for you know me to write something on the board and and kind of work things out on the whiteboard and i think that that's something that i i definitely miss in this whole working from home oh yeah i completely agree um collaborative stuff is harder i mean you even had it in this in this zoom call um Two people like talking at once you know like when you're in a meeting room you can see real time and like look at people getting ready to speak 
Um, and, and there's a lot of, it's, it's similar to people pulling up to a stop sign at the same time and being like, you go, no, you go, no, you go. Um, it, it, that's been a hindrance to productivity for me, at least. Um, totally agree. Um, we got some comments uh, coming in. Um, Gabriel asks why the Netgear app doesn't support the uh, 75, the EX7500, but supports other extenders. Um, I wasn't aware that that was the case. Is that is that the case? Uh, I was wasn't aware of that either. So that's, that's something the, uh, that we could we could talk to um, and suggest uh, some some support for the the 7500. Yeah, definitely. We'll we'll follow up with that. If you do want to um, stream, uh, he he also asked um, when we're going to stream again. Um, at the very latest um, next Friday, but we may be adding more. We're going to talk about that um, with the team. See if we can do more. Um, but um, make sure you're following us on social media: um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, either on NPG or on Netgear. We're going to be announcing our streams there. Um, here and now, I can currently say with certainty we're going to do this again next Friday. Um, but if you want to see um, whether we're going to be doing another one sooner, um, that'll have to be through social media. So um, check that. And hopefully by then we'll have an answer about the EX7500. Uh, um, mm -hmm. And then, yeah, to... Move on to the next question. Um, another one from Snoop Tiger. He said he just joined the chat um, and we already went through this. We probably already went through this, um, but he's in Miami and wants to know any tips to eliminate lag spikes because I use DSL um, report and on 70, 70, it shows lag spikes. I don't know what 70, 70 is. Is that like a- I don't know. I think that's his up down speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But he was also having uh, issues with his. Uh, I think he has an XR500, but it's set up in either access point or router mode, and uh, whatever it is set up, if it's an access point point, it's going to have a, a, a ton of difference than if it was uh, in router mode. Um, so, uh, just which mode are, are, is it in? And, um, you know, we can, we can try to go from there. Well, what do you guys think? Well, I know previously you were also talking about the um, buffer um, and what you have it set at, that that's also going to um, add a little bit of um, lag as well. It shouldn't cause lag, lag spikes, though. No, it shouldn't cause lag spikes. And, and with, like, 70 up and 70 down, uh, if, if that's the case, you know, I would still set the anti-buffer to probably about, like, 40%, which means that it's going to reserve um about 30 i would say in in reserve um okay xr is in router mode um and then you are you uh using the geo filter to to connect to servers um i know that florida has uh some issues with most major games because there's not really a lot of servers in florida they tend to to be up uh, in Virginia and Ohio. And so, like, for example, Fortnite on the East Coast is going to be uh, Virginia or Ohio. Depending on which one you're connecting, you could see a server spike, uh, uh, like a lag spike connecting to the one in Ohio. So uh, using the uh, the geo filter will, will definitely help in, in, in connecting to things that are closer. Um what or where are you seeing this particular issue? Is it in a certain game, um, uh, connecting to a certain kind of server? Uh, just want to kind of zero in on it a little bit more. Could be on a PS4. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it could be. It, it could be a PS4 issue uh, uh, yet again. Um, and uh, I'm I'm hoping in this next generation of uh, of uh, PlayStation that that they really kind of look and take their, their, their networking, you know, uh, a, a little bit more, you know, if they shore that up a little bit more than, um, than they have in previous generations. Look at that. Definitely. Okay. Well, it looks so, like we so all we're again. For Snoop, Snoop Tiger to, to, to kind of catch up with some of those, some of those uh, answers. 
uh, back to us. Uh, Alec, you have a, another another little mini topic to to, to talk another about. Another little mini topic. Um, yeah. we're, how we're, has gaming? We're running been? down to the last uh, minute. Yeah, we're, we're down to the last minute. But uh, um, how has I think all of us game online um, at least to some degree? Um, I'm assuming you. I mean. Mike already said he does, but Darren, I'm assuming with the XR700, you're playing some online games. Um, what has been keeping you guys uh, occupied? What games? I know for me personally, I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing um, and <laughs> League of Legends. But what about what about you guys? Uh, oh, hold on. Snoop, Snoop's got a couple of answers. So Xbox One X... Uh, so I actually have a solution for your Xbox One X because I recently discovered this and I uh, I switched it over and I got a, I was playing Atlas and I kept getting kicked every single time that we got into uh, a fight with another ship and granted I was captaining the ship so I'm at the steering wheel of this uh, like pirate ship right and so every single time that we got into a a ship fight. Uh, I would suddenly get kicked from my Xbox and reset, and so I'm for a minute I'd be stuck on the the wheel while everybody else couldn't use the wheel or steer the ship, and so we lost like two or three ships due to this. Um, and so on the Xbox, uh, so you'll want to uh, make sure that you go through, uh, go into your XR500, and in I believe it's in the advanced settings. You'll want to enable the uh, IP version 6 and then go back into your Xbox and set the I in that network setting to allow IP uh, version 6. Make sure that your modem also allows pass through of IP uh, version 6, and that will give you a lot more stability on Xbox Live um, because their Xbox Live is using multiple channels because it's using not only game chat. It's using uh, party chat and then also uh, game data. And you're connecting kind of proxy through Xbox Live to then the game servers. So with that, uh, the difference between IP version 4 and uh, IP version 6 is uh, 4 is 32-bit encryption, while uh, 6 is 128-bit uh, encryption. Now, the 128 takes a little bit more time to uh, uh, cycle back and forth, but it's also pushing four times the information, um, so it actually uh, balances out. But uh, that should uh, help with Call of Duty. I know it's it's helped with me on on my Xbox. Yeah, that's really good advice. I think you mentioned that to somebody last stream too. I think that's a common issue: is is uh, the stability of of xbox live um and, and i think yeah. that's a solution that isn't as widely distributed as it, as it should be um <laughs> yeah maybe we'll write an article about uh, that i i think i i think i will um uh, xbox live speaking of well, like going back to that whole thing about you know how things are, are going gaming wise um uh xbox live last weekend had huge dropouts because of uh just sheer volume of people playing on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. By the time Saturday had uh, afternoon, it had gotten much better. But uh, uh, the, we were experiencing where if we had a party of four people, um, like, for example, the four of us, in order to get the party to work, we'd invite all four. But then Alec, who started the party, would have to drop from the party then get reinvited by like Darren, who then would have to <laughs> kick Michael out, and then get Michael back in by me reinviting Michael, and and so it was this giant merry-go-round of trying to get people into a party um, of four or greater, um, but that sort of cleared up by like Sunday. Interesting. That's a mess. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was. there's there's so many there's so much stress on all these servers right now. Like, um, you know, I don't want to make a ton of excuses for everybody, but I I get why that happened. I mean, there's so many people that are gaming online. I mean, I'm surprised Zoom is still working as well as it is. The Zoom servers are still up because 
I, I can't imagine their increase. Um, I, I mean, it's got to be three, four hundred percent. I mean, everybody's at home now. Um, I'd say at Netgear, I'd say probably only prior to working from home, maybe 30, 40 percent of meetings needed Zoom video calling. I mean, it seems mostly just in the office, at least from what I've noticed. Yeah. Um, and, and now it's a hundred percent. Every, every single meeting company wide is, um, digital. So I, I'm so surprised that we actually haven't seen, um, too much stress on, on the zoom calls, um, get just given the situation overall. Yeah, they put a lot of, um, effort into keeping zoom up and making sure that their servers can handle the additional load that's been coming because of this. Yeah, Zoom and uh, oh gosh, Google Hangouts and Skype and and even Slack uh, to to that are all sort of become like super essential tools. You know, if, if one of those goes down, um, I, I think that would harm productivity more than anything else. Um, you know, we'd all have to you know look at other alternatives, but uh, but. Uh, it's it's amazing how much volume has increased. Yeah, totally. I mean, I'm glad I'm glad that it has because otherwise I don't I don't know what would happen. I mean, everybody is so uh, relies so heavily on on internet. So um, it's it's been good to yep. see that that capacity has increased and and the data caps are going away and uh, that we're able to adjust as needed um, to the situation obviously not entirely able to just fix it all um there is still dropouts and we had somebody come on and mention new york having big issues but at least there are steps being taken um to accommodate um which is really good so we're winding down to the last four minutes um i did get a message uh, reminding me that we have a um, an ama on on reddit this uh coming tuesday at 10 um, 10 to 12, uh, Pacific time, um, 10 AM to 12 PM Pacific time. And uh, that's going to be on our slash home networking. We've been working with their team, um, the moderators over at home networking to, to help us host the AMA. So, um, thank you to them for helping us out, but we're going to be on there to answer any questions, um, whether it's a technical question, an engineering question, um, a support question, anything, any and all questions, um, on that, um, subreddit, um, the post should be hopefully make it to the top um, <laughs> and um, we'll have a pretty big team of people coming in. I'll, I will be there personally. I don't know how many questions I'm going to answer, but I will be there um, to answer uh, questions coming in from uh, all of our fans over there on our slash home networking. Um, so if I know there was a gentleman asking about um, when we'll do this next. Um, and as I had mentioned, we'll be doing this stream at the very latest next Friday. If we don't announce another one, um, but if you want to reach us even sooner, um, you could ask a question on, on the subreddit. So I'm not sure if you're a Redditor, um, if you'd like to make an account and ask a question on there, um, we, uh, we definitely are, are here to help. We got one comment from Ben. One here. last question. <laughs> yeah, I, I actually didn't see your question come in, Ben. So if you want to type it again, we can, uh, we can answer. I, I don't, I don't think I've seen your name pop up in chat yet, so. We must uh, yeah. Sort of come I, I think the the chat has been kind of sketchy. Uh, you know, I, I've typed in a couple times and it doesn't seem to have registered. So, uh, yes, uh, ask your question away. Oh. Okay. Uh, Ar Ar Armin had checked the the yep. link and doesn't see that any of them are supported on uh, Verizon. Um, that's something that that. You know, we could all take that suggestion and, and, and talk. Um, oh, what time on next Friday? Same bat time, same bat channel. So uh, at uh, about, what, 12? Noon Pacific time. Noon, noon Pacific time. And uh, we'll get your um, uh, questions answered. This is downstairs, Mike. I think uh, Powerline might be a good solution for Ben here. Yeah, Powerline might be an option, and also um, getting a Wi-Fi range extender and putting it on the floor between the attic and the downstairs where the um, the main Wi-Fi box is. 
Yeah, I would definitely uh, suggest either of those. Um, one problem that you might run into um, with the um, power line adapter, which I think would be a great solution, um, is, is and I've run into this here at my home, is the two power lines are on different like grids. That's what I've been told. So my power line adapter well, on, downstairs. Yeah, they're on what's called two different circuits. Two or different circuits. For the electrical side, they call it two different phases. And basically, if you look phases, at a gotcha. um, a um, power box, you'll notice a bunch of um, toggle switches on there. And usually, there you'll see like two of them in side by side, or one group at the top, one group at the bottom. And mm -hmm. each one of those groups is on its own circuit. So if you have one piece of the power line on one of the circuits and the other piece of the power line on the other circuit, you get a lot of um, degradation in the signal to the point where you don't get the higher speeds that you would normally get with the power line. And the only way to really know that is to actually test them to find out if you're actually on the same circuit or not. Gotcha. Um, okay, so it, def definitely like, try that. Yeah, would you mind typing in what it's called? So, sure. Uh, so Angela, you're be, you want to... Yeah, Angelo, I, I, would, I would go ahead and link our extender page. And then I don't know if we have a uh, power line page that's dedicated for power line, but if we do, um, link link that, and then uh, he'll be able to go in there and see what products we offer. But um, yeah, definitely definitely try to figure out um, if the circuits are the same. In which case, I would definitely suggest the power line adapter to get. Um, you'll have an Ethernet, um, basically an Ethernet port upstairs, um, and you can plug in an access point. You can plug in uh, a switch and hardwire everything if you'd like. Um, so that's one option, and then yeah. The Wi-Fi extender will basically just put an access point um, within range of your attic, um, which should be able to uh, help you out there. Okay, last question. We're going to cut it off after this one because we are um, at the end of our stream here. So very last question here um, from Toasty. I have Windstream, and when I download games in my Xbox, it downloads at around 5 megabytes per second, which I know sucks, but what do you think I am paying for? how many megabytes per second i also do not own any of your products but i am and i think his message reached the character, the character I think his message cut off. <laughs> um just to answer that question uh, oh he's looking into them okay so um this is a common kind of misinterpretation of internet speeds um so for example i get um 100 or around 200 megabytes per second down um, but that's going to be bottlenecked by servers. So if I'm downloading a Steam game, I typically peak out at around like 12 megabytes per second. And that's because they're not transmitting your download that fast. Like you're kind of maxing out their servers. And so if you're downloading something on Xbox, like, you know, even if you have gigabit speeds, you're not going to be downloading it at a gigabit per second because, um, they're not transmitting it to you at a, gig at a gigabit per second. If they were, you would, because right. your internet is rated for that. Um, it's more so um, the benefit of having high internet speeds is being able to run multiple things at once at a high speed. So, you know, a gigabit per second, you could run six, seven, eight, 4K streams and not miss a beat. Um, but relative to your question, um, you know yeah also also with xbox it, it it depends like if you are downloading something that like not everybody is downloading at the same time for example uh when uh last week everybody was downloading uh warzone or, or last two weeks ago uh you know i have 300 uh mb uh service but connecting to that and downloading that game um uh, i think i topped topped out at like maybe 60, 65, uh, which is way lower than what my, you know, speed was. But it's also, and that would also drop down to like 10 or 12 uh, at times because of just the volume of people contacting that server to download. Uh, now, as far as our products, you know, our products will definitely help in, in, in your, your online gaming experience. And um, we can go into that in, in more details um, you know, but you go to netgear.com slash gaming and take a look or, or watch any of our, our streams during the week while we're gaming because we can usually talk about those uh, at that time. Uh, I know that we're running short on time here. So, um, 
uh, I think that uh, we have one last question. Uh, can I use the new Orbi router uh, with an existing installed Orbi system as a satellite? Yeah, you don't actually want to purchase the um, Orbi router for that. We actually sell um, the individual satellites, the RBS um, satellite that you would be um, getting. And also, just um, as a note, the new A um, Wi-Fi 6 Orbeez that we have are not backward compatible with the Wi-Fi 5 systems at this point. Cool. Um, I think we caught up on all the questions. Um, I, I really hope um, just to all of our viewers, um, firstly, thank you for the um, continued viewership. We never really dipped below um, you know, 20 viewers, which is, is a great stream for us. Um, so thank you all for being here and for asking your questions. Um, Definitely, got some comments that, that are thanking us. And um, obviously we're happy to do this for you. Um, we know that it's hard to get tech support right now and that internet is becoming more valuable than it's ever been. And so we really hope that doing this can help you guys out a little bit. And um, we will continue to do this. Um, so, you know, if you have more questions or you want to continue to improve your Wi-Fi and continue to get those speeds that you, you're paying for, um, come back, ask more questions. We're here to chat. Um, thank you all for keeping us occupied during these two hours. And um, that's all That's all from me. Um, anybody else has any more comments? Um, please make them. No, I just... I, I... I just want to thank everybody for, for watching and asking your questions. Uh, you know, uh, we had a variety of different uh, questions, and I hope that uh, by asking your questions, those answers that we give help not only you, but somebody else as well. Um, keep the questions coming. Uh, we're going to keep, keep doing this. We'll see you next week. Uh, Toasty's asking when the next one will be. Uh, I believe the next one will be next Friday at 12 Pacific time. Uh, but stay, stay, pay attention to our, our social media. We may be adding uh, a, another one just based off of the, uh, the, the sheer volume of you guys. Uh, but keep it coming. Definitely, definitely. And um, I believe that these uh, streams will um, they'll be viewable again, even though we're not live anymore. Um, we, we, you can come back and watch them. So if you, had a, if you had a question and we answered it and you want to rewind and check, um, please come back. Um, this will be on our YouTube page, so um, you can always uh, come see what we said. Um, but that's going to close out the stream. Um, thank you to everybody who came and helped me out with this. Thank you, Ben, Michael, and Darren. Really appreciate your time. And uh, yeah, we're going to close out. So take care, everybody. Thanks for coming by, and we'll see you uh, next Friday at the very latest. Right, goodbye, everyone. Cool. <laughs>